Welcome to the Best Kept Secrets podcast where we share our best kept secrets about life, love, God and everything in between. Hi guys, welcome back to the Best Kept Secrets podcast episode 4. Um, we're almost halfway into the season and I wanted to do an episode where it's a bit more light. Um, usually we discuss some very heavy things on this channel. If you don't know, we on this channel we share our best kept secrets about life, love, God and everything in between. So today I have two guests with me that have also been very, very highly requested when we did a question tag on our Instagram, which you should be following, best kept secrets pod. Lydia KM, Jules were very highly, highly requested. So I am so happy to have both of you here. Um, I will let both of you introduce yourselves. Usually I introduce the guests, but I'm just like, you know what? Let me let them hype themselves up today. <laughs> um, and then I'll share what we're talking about today. So Lydia? Okay. Um, first of all, I'm so happy to be back. Um, if back you again. Season one, yeah. I've already hit the mic. <laughs> two seconds, two seconds in, and I've already hit the mic. Um, so thank you so much for having me back. Um, I love being in this space. I love what you are about. So anytime, okay. anytime, any day, you know I'm here. Um, my name is Lydia KM. I am a wellness and lifestyle content creator and a podcaster. I'm one half of TMI Podcast KE. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> I wish you introduced each other. I feel like I could have hyped you more. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah you're not hyping yourself yeah. enough. Wait, so how do you hype yourself? I've said the truth. That's what I am, right? Just the truth, but with some. Yeah, with, with some. some yeah. Okay, go on. Go. Yeah. Uh, the go dopest, on. the baddest, the most. <laughs> most. Yeah. Anyways, um, my name is Jules. Um, <laughs> I'm a content creator. I struggle to say one thing. Yeah. But I have a bunch of podcasts and YouTube channels. Mm. And yeah, you can find me on my Instagram at Jules underscore her, or you can follow my latest podcast, which is So This Is Love. We just launched last year, October, and uh, we just jumped onto season two mm -hmm. recently. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank I've you. known Sharon, not personally for yeah. a long time, but I feel like I, it's one of those people, like I, I told her when I walked in, I was like, I feel mm -hmm. like I know you because we've met so many times yeah. in, in very intimate spaces, mm -hmm. like friends this and mm -hmm. birthdays of this and that mm -hmm. and that. Um, and I was very honored when you sent me this. And also you got me a really cute pink dress. You yeah, sent me a dress for my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to pull up. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to say, you should tell us all your bunch of podcasts. Which one? Yeah, yeah oh. tell us. Okay, so I am the creator of a podcast called So This Is Love. Mm -hmm. It is only available audio only. Mm -hmm. um, it's not A lot of people ask if it's available on YouTube. It's not because just how I... We have pseudonyms and people don't come really showing their faces. And yeah. that's how I've structured and created the podcast intentionally. So it's available on Spotify or wherever you find your podcasts. I'm also one over three of a podcast called It's Related, I Promise. Um, and I have a YouTube channel called My Tiny Little Channel, which I started during COVID. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, now we can't meet with the rest of over yeah. 25. Mm -hmm. So let me start my own channel. And then because mm -hmm. I didn't want it to... I do want pressure to be as big as over 25. Mm -hmm. I was like, let me just call it my tiny little channel. So in case it fails, <laughs> I'll be like, but see, it was tiny. Yeah. And then there's over 25, which is currently on a break. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I was one over four of that. Yeah. yeah. First of all, to be known mm -hmm. as just one name. Madonna, just like Jules. just Jules. <laughs> Jules. When you say Jules, Jules. Everyone, everyone knows, knows what you who you're talking about. Yeah, that's the hype. Wow. Literally, yeah. Yeah. just my like name that. is just yeah. Jules. Jules. Done, and everyone Period. knows. Yeah. Also, you're the person who has the most amount of creative outlets I've ever seen. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. True. Thank you. Mm -mm. The rest yeah. of us. <laughs> Sharon Kangi, like Jokers. three names, everything that's you're known by your entire. Because there's another Sharon ID. K, isn't there? There's a Sharon K and there's a Sharon Mwangi. Oh. So I am um, Sharon K. K Mwangi. Mwangi. Yeah. And then Lydia K. M. I think it's cooler to have like a Lydia K. M. No, we want Beyonce moments. Yeah. Oh, you want to be just yeah. like Jules. I was just out with Lydia. Like, Oprah, yeah. Everyone you knows what that means. Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. No, like, you don't. We're like Lydia. Then, Lydia who? Yeah. 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 Lydia K. M. Yeah, Sharon. Sharon who? <sighs> exactly. Just to Tafika. To Tafika. Yeah. Um, so today's episode, we're sharing um, on our journeys in singleness and things we have learned in those seasons. This actually, I've always wanted to do this episode, but I was having a conversation with Lydia, I think last week or the week before, and I was sharing with her some things and she was like, you know, I was... I think we both had a moment where we were like, mm -hmm. we should definitely do this episode together. And I was telling her how 
a lot of people when they're single they don't go in it with intentionality so just like yeah me i'm just single and you're not really intentional about things you're doing when you're single um how you're treating yourself how you're just acting when you're single and i was like i really feel like we need to do this episode and then obviously Jules is such an incredible source of knowledge and i was like yeah definitely having Jules as well Thank so you. um we'll each share points i can start us off yeah. and then Jules and then Lydia and then we'll just go on like that yeah, yeah. so mine are written down i'm old school i like writing i also like it's i think cuz i like journaling i like just having things written so i wrote mine down um so the first thing that i wrote is that one of the things i learned in my single singleness journey on my singleness is that um i am enough as i am mm-hmm. and that's something i learned actually in therapy and i was sharing with my therapist at the time that i was feeling very frustrated that i was still single and i was just like all my friends are getting babies or getting married or getting engaged and me i'm just here single mm. and she was just like she feels like i need to work on the belief that i need someone else in order to be complete and you know she just told me to say it as an affirmation i am enough as i am i am enough as i am so i would literally i wrote it down and i would literally keep telling myself that i was enough as i was until i believed it because i think i didn't believe it mm-hmm. even when she to- she said that to me I was just like I mean cool concept <laughs> but it's not really fun. like I mean fun but like I don't really get it yeah and even by the time I was entering a relationship I felt complete I felt enough mm. and he just came and added onto what I already had mm. as an individual yeah um so yeah that's one of the things that I learned yeah I yeah. I have a question mm-hmm. in regards to that mm-hmm. um how at w- how long did it That's take? That's uh, no, first of all how long were you single? How long were you single? single. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how long were you single? Uh-huh. Yeah. And then um because I'm I'm with you with the whole yeah cool story. We hear a lot of all this <laughs> yeah. just believe in yourself and then yeah. I'm like I am enough. I am enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But then mm-hmm. did you actually really start to feel like you're enough and did, mm-hmm. how does feeling enough feel like? How mm-hmm. do you get the point where you're like I get it? You mm-hmm. know what's that thing? Or oh, is it an mm-hmm. experience mm-hmm. or is it a maybe a way you look at yourself? Mm-hmm. Um that you're single because yeah. when I don't know if I don't know if um somebody who is in the pits mm. of being alone or feeling mm-hmm. alone or mm-hmm. needing or feeling like they want to mm-hmm. have somebody mm-hmm. I, I, like you know and I'm happy you said you came from a point of frustration mm-hmm. like yeah. not um you know I was just like yeah, yeah. then I decided no like no. for real this yeah. is this is Mm. People get out of relationships and get into relationships really quickly mm. for a reason. We see it all the time mm-hmm. even with celebrities like yeah. JLo. JLo, Kim Kim Kardashian straight out of Kanye into Pete Davidson. Yeah. It's like, wait, you guys are the advocates of Nini, all this, mm. you know, female yeah. empowerment, stay yeah. alone, independence, but then when it, when the rubber meets the road, no one's leaving their husbands high Beyonce after being cheated on. Yeah. No one's, you know what I mean? And I love mm. Beyonce. Yeah. Obsessed. Mm-hmm. So I want like mm-hmm. a genuine, like, did it really happen? Did you actually feel like you're enough? I did. I did actually. Um, I think, okay, let me give some context. So I was one of those serial daters. Yeah, me too. So I would leave one relationship <laughs> into the other, into the other. Some of them were just flings. Some of them wouldn't actually materialize into a relationship, but I was serial. So I, I had issues being alone. Mm. I had issues feeling like I was enough as a person, as an individual, right? So when she said that to me on my therapy, say that to me, it took me by like surprise. I was like, what do you mean I'm enough as I am? How do I actually get to feel that, yeah. right? So it started by me just internalizing that as a concept. And then I was very intentional about not going on dates, not chatting up any man. Yani nothing like I was ground zero. I was just <laughs> like you know what? I need to break this cycle because it's clearly a cycle where I am not comfortable enough as a person, so I am looking for someone else to be with me so yeah. I don't have to face myself. Mm. Yeah. So when I decided to okay cut off everything and face myself, mm. then I started to realize you know what? I am actually enough as mm. a person. Mm. I am enough as I am without someone else. 
And if someone else is coming into the picture, they're coming to add on to it. Mm -hmm. But it was a continuous process. I can't say I had like an an epiphany. Mm -hmm. I I woke up one day and I realized that I was enough. It was a continuous and it was hard. Yeah. Especially like the not going on dates, not talking to any men. Mm -hmm. Because they were... Me, they mm. were there in mm-hmm. my DMs. They were men trying, but I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Because yeah. you, you, yeah. you've done it. You've done, you've done, done it. Right. I'm stuck in a loop. Yeah. I need to get out of this cycle. Yeah. yeah. So you were able to basically prove to yourself that you yeah. are enough by being by yourself yes. and seeing that, oh my God, yeah. the world didn't. Yeah. There yeah. were, I'm like, my world does not have to revolve yeah. around, around a relationship. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how long how it took? How long? Yeah. Well, you <laughs> single. Um... <laughs> Not be be, this be is what interviewed you have three, in my own three podcast. podcasters in the same podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, it took me about a year. Mm-hmm. I was intentionally single for, for a, a year. year. Wow. Yeah, intentionally. Did you have Did you have pockets of loneliness? Like, oh my god, I'm gonna mess yes, this up mm. for sure. And I will share about that later. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you go next. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. So. Learnings and lessons from being single. Me, I was in the same boat as you. And mm-hmm. I feel like maybe when you've just said I was a serial dater, I think there's some there's somewhere you've said that in the past mm-hmm. in some content of yeah. yours. Because mm-hmm. this sounds very mm-hmm. familiar from mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And that's why I related to you. Because mm-hmm. that was me as well. Mm-hmm. Um, just before we got on here, mm-hmm. we were talking about how long my singlehood had lasted. I'm not yeah. going to say how many years because it's a bit, I don't know. Everybody's like, what? Crazy. Oh, years, yeah. And no one believes me, but um, it was running into a decade. Mm. But that meant when I would tell this to my like people around me, they're like, no, but what about Nani and mm. so-and-so and so-and-so? Mm-hmm. I'm like, none of those, whatever that was, lasted for more than mm-hmm. a year for me. So for me, I didn't feel like count. it was yeah. a real relationship. Mm-hmm. The last proper relationship I had was back in the day in my like early 20s. So I went through a huge chunk of my 20s yeah. being completely, completely, completely alone or having some sort of thing going on or having what I think mm. is a relationship mm. going on. But looking back, that was not a relationship. Okay. Mm. You know, and now having gotten into mm. or knowing relationships in general, mm-hmm. I'm like, when you get into a year with somebody and you mm. start to re- and you get to year two and you're uh, approaching year three and mm. you're like, Man, for real, love is a choice. I can, mm-hmm. I'm irritated the hell out of some sort yeah. of behaviors yeah. here. But, and like before when I'm like, ah, peace, I'm out. Mm. Now, when I'm choosing somebody, I'm just like, oh, wow, this is, it's different. Yeah. Mm. But it only works if you're in a healthy yeah. um, dynamic. dynamic. Mm. So for me, I think the biggest lesson was, um, I would say the biggest lesson in general is when you are lonely and when you're in that feeling of, I really, 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 really wish I had someone. This mm-hmm. desire, but I mean mm-hmm. loneliness, mm-hmm. and I've been there. Mm-hmm. That is not the time to go shopping for a husband. Oh, right. Or for a boyfriend. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I guarantee mm-hmm. you all the therapy you've done, all the journaling you've done, all the whatever you have done will completely disappear. Be yeah. It, yeah. Or it will be is it masqueraded? You will it, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll be like, no, but it's not that bad. Like, yeah. this was my boundary. But, well, mm-hmm. you know, you start becoming more malleable mm-hmm. and adjusting yeah. because you just really want to be with someone. You have a need, yeah. You have yeah. a need. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, being connected to somebody mm-hmm. is in this world of loneliness mm-hmm. and and lack of connection, mm-hmm. even though we are so hyper-connected mm-hmm. digitally. Mm-hmm. Let me just say, it's such a huge human need mm-hmm. in general for everybody. Mm-hmm. So when you hear people doing crazy things for love yeah. or because of mm-hmm. love, yeah. that should show you how important or integral it is mm-hmm. to just like the human condition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't usually go, when people tell me I made some horrible decisions mm-hmm. out of loneliness, mm-hmm. first of all, I, I applaud people who are able to acknowledge that that's what yeah. that was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. for me, I would say at the time, I did not see. It's mm-hmm. after when you come out yeah. and you realize there is no way in a sober-minded mind situation, situation yeah. would I have allowed this kind of behavior with this person continue mm. to the extent that it has. Yeah. It's mm. because I was lonely mm-hmm. and I have, and I was fearful of going back there. Yeah. yeah. So question, um, loneliness is feeling disconnected and not just from a romantic partner, just generally feeling disconnected. Were there other things around that season when you are feeling that loneliness mm. you can feel connection from other places and you are at alone 
or at desire for companionship, but you're not at lonely because you have connection elsewhere. Is there anything else that was happening around? Uh, probably not because oh. um, I was in a job that I was completely feeling misaligned mm. with. And yes, I had friends. Yeah. Yes, I had my, my, in fact, I was like, this is, I'm talking about the beginning of over 25. So yeah. I was around 26, 27 or yeah. something around that time. Yeah. I was at I was at the pits of it at that yeah, time. Okay. Um and whatever whoever I was with during that time just know that was not <laughs> that was just not that was not me. Yeah. Yeah. Um so I was disconnected to other things right in, mm. in my life. Okay. Um but imagine I get where you get I know you're getting to a place where you well, to, I know what you're getting mm. at like you can have very strong connections like let's say home, yeah. family, friends. Yeah. But there's sometimes there's just an, there's missing. an age yeah. that cannot be scratched mm, other yeah. than through yeah. a romantic yeah. Yeah. connection. Yeah. Mm. And the family and the friends can only get you so, so far, far. Yeah. into your that's in your true. in your fulfillment mm. cup. Yeah. But that's when you really uh, that looking within. Because now you'll jump into you now I ended up in that loop. Mm. Mm. And even after you get out of the loop, you're back to the beginning. Mm. Yeah. So there's no way through yeah. this mm. thing. I mean yeah. around it. You can mm. oops. <laughs> you kind of have to go through it yeah. Yeah. and figure out how to find acceptance yeah. mm-hmm. that this is where I'm at now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's not only about dating the wrong people, it's mm-hmm. even the people you keep around you. The, mm-hmm. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. Just the energy. Energies, the energy. The energy, Your energy yeah. ain't right. The yeah. people you'll keep around you, the decisions you make, mm-hmm. the places you say, okay, let me just go. Yeah. I would never go for an event like that, but let me just go because I'm mm-hmm. um, just what by else am I gonna do? Yeah. Everyone else is at home with their couples. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's a lot of an out of character things you can do when you're in, in a situation. chronic state of loneliness. Yeah. Um, and because of that, I'm very compassionate to some people of the things, even in, in my podcast, the stories I've had, these women yeah. who just end up in very abusive situations, whatever. Yeah. It's like the base of it is just, I didn't want to be alone. Mm. I, I didn't want to yeah. be alone. Yeah. 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 I feel like that, um, th- um, the reason why I'm, I was asking about like, you know, the whole disconnectedness is that, because I do believe there's a time where it doesn't matter how much you're connected to the whole world. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter how much you love your family, your job, everything. There's a length of being alone, like single, that naturally you get to, I just want someone. Like yeah. whether or not you're connected, um, they, I feel like the length of time as well um, is definitely going to contribute. It so can how, contribute. Yeah, so yeah. how long were you single then before this got to that point? Oh God, years. I can't even remember. Right, okay. Mm, mm, right. A long time. Yeah. And mind you, I'm mm. feeling this while being in this situation. Situation. Mm. This so one person, but, and I know this ain't it. Mm. You know. But then... Mm. I'm just like, let me just have this place holder because I don't yeah. think I can handle. But you know what, Lydia? I feel like if I had at least one or two other things working out for me, yeah. connection-wise, maybe mm-hmm. I was feeling more... Co- no, because I feel like my friends were... I was connected with my friends. I don't know what was... It. Or the maybe work because you are maybe such work. a creative me, person. For me, if my, let me tell you, if my work and my relationship mm. are both down, mm. yeah. please check on me. Yeah. Mm. I am not okay. I will look okay. Yeah. Mm. But I am not okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that... One well. of them needs to be working out and yeah. both mm. were just not and for a long... Ooh period mm. of time yeah like a long long like and then i was also like what am i supposed to do with my life like yeah. i was having a lot of existential issues around that time mm. 25 that. 26 27 yeah. that is why i called over 25 over 25 because i was like this is the cusp for me i'm done <laughs> mm. yeah i'm leaving that shit behind yeah mm. yeah yeah okay um okay. wow i mean i definitely get it and i oh, i'm always like in this single season that i am i've been intentionally single for what <laughs> <That's your counting. laughs> i'm counting <laughs> So I've been single for nine months. This is the ninth mm-hmm. month or the tenth month, one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been intentionally single since after my birthday. I turned 32 in March. March. Mm-hmm. So, and I just felt this air around mm-hmm. that time. I was just like, it's time. It's time to sit down. You know, you've had your fun. Yeah. The post-single fun. But now mm-hmm. it's time to li- really like, just look into yourself. And I always say how long I've been single so that it can give context and not to remove from your situation. If you've been single for so long and you're wanting to be with someone and you desire. So my advice will probably only fit someone who's been single for a short while. So if you're like five years and you're still looking, you won't feel about the same about singlehood as I do right now. Because me right now, I am in the joy of yeah. singlehood i am in the loving on myself um but the first thing that i've learned during this my single season in general but especially being intentionally single is 
you have work to do. Um, mm. Post breakup, um, my, majority of my intention was about how did I get here? Not what did anyone do to get me mm. here? Mm -hmm. How did I get here? What is my story? What is uh, what are my beliefs about love? What are my beliefs about my relationship? What are my poor relationship patterns? And during that period when I was, I guess, going through the breakup, like the first three months, is like you're just hurting. So you're not, you don't have, you're not able to see things in a clearer way. Mm. Then the next phase of my singlehood was like fun, I'm out, dating, whatever. Then I wasn't really paying attention. But now when I'm intentionally alone is when I, I've been like, there's so many ways that I've been repeating a cycle that I wasn't mm -hmm. aware mm -hmm. because it's different faces, right? Yeah. This one looks different. This one talks yeah. different. Girl, this one feels different. Same, you yeah, know, man. this one has a little yeah. a different walk, but it's just been different faces, but the same, same. thing. Did yeah. you the feel same like story? Did you feel like it's like it's just it's like same? What do they say? Same script, different cast. Kind yeah. of right, like, but it, also in a in in a different way. But mm. the foundation. What's the story? Yo. Forget what's the reason this one, um, you and this person broke up, or what was the fundamental issues in this one? Mm -hmm. But what's the story with you in mm -hmm. every single one? Oh, um, okay. And how now, are you showing up? Exactly. In how was I showing up? Oh. And what was mm, I, I replaying? What story mm. was I replaying over and over again? And so this time alone has been a lot of that. A lot of sitting in your... I won't say like you blame yourself, but there's a mm. lot of like accountability it, uh, and accountability is burdening sometimes. It's a harsh reality. Yes, it's a harsh reality. It's like mm -hmm. all the ways that you contributed to stories that were even harmful to you and you weren't even aware at the time. So mm. I feel like this season has been very much the truth of mm -hmm. what has been happening in my relationship from my own standpoint has been glaring. So I've been able to learn to number one, empathize with other people about their own shit. Because usually when you get a relationship, oh yeah, it's you, your fingers, fault. fingers, yeah. fingers, yeah. fingers. But the more you see your stuff, the more you're just like, do you know what? Everyone was trying their best. Everyone was trying their best um, when things messed up, but everyone was trying their best. And maybe not, uh, we didn't have the self-awareness to even see the kind of damage we were we were doing. So mm -hmm. it's given me a lot of empathy, but a lot of insight on mm -hmm. my own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a lot. Yeah. I feel like I also went through that, um, especially when I left a very toxic mm -hmm. relationship situation that I was in. And my first instinct was to be the victim. Always. And, and to just be like, yeah, you're the reason this and this, mm -hmm. this and this happened. And then when... I went now into therapy and my therapist was calling me out. I was like, what do you mean? I'm also like, I also have a part to what play. Do you mean? What do you mean? How? Uh, but I'm perfect, <laughs> but I'm great. Yeah. Like, have you not met me? Yeah. <laughs> so just that, like taking accountability for, wow. Okay. So I also had a part to play. I also was allowing these things to happen that's to me because my self-worth was very low. If I had higher self-worth, I would not have allowed these things. I would have left yeah. years ago. Yeah. Um, if I had, you know, seen how held myself in higher regard, yeah. if I had worked on my self-esteem issues and mm. if I wasn't using him as, you know, a plaster over my issues, yeah. then maybe I would not have been in this situation or, or, or I would not have let it go on for as long as it went on yeah. for. Mm. And that was hard because mm. it's easier to be the victim. Yeah it's a lot harder oh, for you so to, to, to to be like, okay, I know this person was horrible and the things they did were horrible, but I also had a part to play in mm. this. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's key. It's not that no one else was responsible. Everyone was responsible, but it's like owning your part without having to kind of ignore it and pretend because your part is the only one you can change. No matter what, whatever someone did, you can never change that pattern or that behavior but you can change um you can change yours yeah. for me one of the things that um i saw this post and i can never find it anywhere else but basically the lady said before you're betrayed you betrayed yourself right and I, I guess when i read that i saw how that could be yeah. whether it's betraying your own values mm -hmm. um whether it's betraying I don't know, yourself in some kind of way. And it doesn't have to be necessarily that dramatic, but it could be something you spot in someone that's a contradiction with your own values that you you look around. Before you 
were betrayed, that betrayal happened. And sometimes maybe it doesn't. I'm not going to say that you betrayed yourself. That's where you were betrayed. And it's not the cause. It's just that tends to be the way the story happens. Mm -hmm. And when I was able to look back, I could see the way in which I, um, I, I betrayed myself, right? And mm. it's betraying yourself because at the time, you know, you're looking at someone from a holistic point of view and you want to see, like, you want to see what you want to see, mm -hmm. right? So that's what you look for. And yeah. But really, eventually, it's you're really supposed to be looking for what is in front of you, not what you wish you could see in mm. this person. Yeah. Mm. So I agree. Well, you can, can I just say mm -hmm. what betraying yourself also can look like? Because mm -hmm. I just started to learn this mm -hmm. literally like three weeks ago. Yeah. Um, through therapy. My therapist asked me to, well, I was explaining to them whatever I was explaining. And they said, um, you know, you also have to be authentic to your own self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds so logical, but the way it hit me, I was like, whoa, because I'm showing up authentically for others, mm -hmm. yeah. but I'm not being authentic to myself mm -hmm. in some situations. And how I do that is by compromising my values. Mm -hmm. Yes. So by compromising my values, sure. now you need to actually know what your values are. Mm -hmm. She told me to go and write down my values. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I of, did that as well. You did? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now I started seeing the values, the values I have, especially now with relationships, not mm -hmm. romantic, friendships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like what I, what my top values, some of my values are showing up, mm -hmm. authenticity, mm -hmm. loyalty, empathy, empathy, mm -hmm. empathy is my top. So she told me, so keep your top. top five. Eh? Me too. Yes. Um, kindness oh. to others, especially others who are of a lower, mm -hmm. whatever Ooh. they knew. I've been with people we've gone for lunch with and they are so rude to waiters mm -hmm. yeah. and you know, little things and you see night starts to, um, so, for, so for example, what you, you see somebody who is very inauthentic mm -hmm. and constantly inauthentic, mm -hmm. they show up one way to you and then they're inauthentic, you know, they're maybe they're BSing somebody else or they are lying or they talk badly mm -hmm. about others or what mm -hmm. have you. And you create a story in your head around that mm -hmm. and that person who you're keeping in your life. Right. And that is the, that is how you betray your own, Mm. values mm. so by the time somebody betrays you it could even be a romantic partner mm. i believe that would, whatever that quote is yeah. you just yeah. said you've already you betrayed, betrayed yourself, yourself. because yeah. you have chosen to turn a blind eye in the name of compromise mm. and people need to understand the difference between compromising yeah mm. because not everything can go your way mm. yeah there are times you actually have to be like all right yeah mm -hmm. i'll but compromise values, yeah but try, it's such a, that's the meaning that's the dance of life yeah mm. where am i going too far mm. mm -hmm. where um being inauthentic to myself yeah. versus actually hearing my partner out yeah. and going like, okay, you know what? I'm willing I'll compromise. to compromise. So what yeah. I like to do, mm -hmm. it's not the way I go about things, yeah. but let's meet in the middle. It's mm -hmm. true. It's a dance and yeah. it cannot be how you compromise in your relationship mm -hmm. is not the same as mine. Yeah. For real, for real. Yeah. Yeah. So what does that mean for people? It means doing the work to mm -hmm. figure out what does compromise look like to me? Mm -hmm. What does authentic, what does, uh, what do my values look yeah. like to me? Yeah. What does betraying my values mm -hmm. look to me mm -hmm. thereby? putting myself in a, a, a position to yeah. to be betrayed or be, to to be mm. yeah. to be disappointed yeah mm. um i i saw that if you if you do find someone has ever done something that's compromise like it's not what you would do right mm. like that is like well we might not have the same values but then an, a follow up could be what are they regretful about because we all make mistakes even us maybe we've stepped out of some of these values we say but what someone is regretful of as well it can be an indicate indicator whether was mm. that was a mistake mm. or whether this is actually the values that this, this person holds yeah, yeah. so there's mm. that because humans are humans and we make mistakes mm. that's but a yeah. good point yeah, yeah. Mm. are they regretful of mm. certain behaviors of certain behaviors yeah, yeah. so yeah or maybe even it's not a baby maybe it's actually their value at the time yeah mm. but, but now it's changed they've they've yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so true because that could happen that can happen so I guess yeah. on the other side it's trying to figure out how can I provide space for this person to it's true whatever yeah. but to me I'll say know your values don't compromise on them yeah. and when you do be ready wear a seatbelt because the yeah. ride is going to be <laughs> Gotta that's be a that's crazy really one. good because I remember when I started now thinking of going back into dating, I literally did the same exercise where I wrote like my top five like val values, things I am okay compromising, things that I'm not okay compromising, my non-negotiables, all of those things. Yeah. And I have never really intentionally sat down to be like, okay, so what are my values as a person? Mm. I was just living life. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think now when I went now back into the dating scene, I would go with all of these things in my mind. Yeah. So immediately, like, if I'm feeling like, mm, I'm just like, I'm out. Yeah. 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 
Even now, that has even, and let me write a very big point because of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, my second point, um, ah, I'm trying to figure out which one I want to say <laughs> next. Okay. So mine is a bit, okay, I'll explain. But I, I wrote down, don't make an idol of the blessing. Mm. So let me explain. Oh. So basically, I was like obsessed with the concept of marriage for a really long time yeah. <laughs> and it became an idol for me so all of my prayers were around marriage all of my conversations everyone that i would meet i would just be like marriage marriage is marriage, you? marriage. Is, it you? Is, is it you you, you is it know you? like is i was <laughs> obsessed with this thing right and there were even situations where i didn't even really like the person i was just so focused on i need to get married you know, I was focused on being chosen. Mm. So I wasn't even looking at, okay, do I even actually like this person? Do I actually want to be with this person? Right? So it wasn't until Thimba, you know Thimba? Yeah. Pastor Thimba. Um, so he DM'd me and he was just like, do you feel like you're, you're idolizing marriage? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> actually, when I think about <laughs> it, when I because I think I was ranting on my stories or something, and then so he responded that to me, and I was like, you know what? I think I do. I think I have made an idol, which it's a blessing. Yeah. But I have made an idol of it. It's a good thing. It's a blessing from God. But when you make it an idol, then that's when it starts to become a not so great thing, right? Yeah. So. That's definitely, I think, especially people who are, you know, spiritual, I think that's something, especially the church, really pushes, especially on women, mm. that they need to get married. Why are you not married? Blah, blah, blah. So we become obsessed with wanting marriage and, and just chasing this thing. Mm. So I'm now at a point where I'm just like, I'm not chasing it. I desire it. It's just a desire. That's as as far as, as I'm going with it, it's a desire. When it happens, it happens. With whoever it happens with, it will happen. Yeah. But I'm not going into, like, all my situations just being like, choose me, marry me, yeah. let's do this. Yeah. yeah. And or using relationships as, like, a proof that, see... I am worthy of being chosen. Yeah. See, I, you know, because what ends up happening is that you find someone, you've, um, you've written the end before you know if they can even fit the journey Oof. to that. Mm. That's what Sean Booty says. You need to put that on a t-shirt. Oh, that's <laughs> not you? No, <laughs> no it's I'm Sean Booty. Like, Sean Booty was like, she met, Sean Booty is this incredible creator. Yeah, Please go follow her on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and she said that she used to meet people and she had already decided the end. Like, yeah. I've just mm. met you. Oh my You're, my husband. You're my husband. Yeah. You're my husband. You don't but know. You have but no idea if they have the capacity to walk <laughs> this walk, yeah. if they have the capacity to give you what you want. Like, absolutely none of it. And then it's that. It's that mm. you end up falling short because you're not even checking whether mm. the people have even the shoes to walk this yeah. journey. Is this person even going to be a good husband? You know what I mean? Do they want to be do married? They even want to be a husband? Because I found a screenshot of a conversation I was having with someone when I was heartbroken, like in 20, what? Like 17, mm. a long time ago. And I was just telling this person, yeah, me, so and so, we broke up. And uh, yeah, I'm so sad. I thought he was going to be my husband, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, now that I look back in hindsight, I'm like, why would I think that <laughs> Who would, made would be my husband? husband? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just because I was oh going gosh. in it with the end in mind. And I wasn't actually looking at, okay, who is this person that I am doing this with? And how am I showing up in this situation? Yeah. Am I even present am i or am i just chasing mm. the end of this yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. and guess who takes the l you yeah yeah always you yeah mm. mm -hmm. wow 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 i mean i'm i'm deep deep in that story but I've never idolized marriage. Funny enough, yeah, yeah. Me, I feel like I, like I, I was telling you, me it was it's not the marriage. It's me, for me, it's always the kids. Yeah, it's the so kids it's not for the, you. Please marry yeah. me. Yeah, it's, yeah. Kids me, it's for more me. like kids. Me, it's the partnership. Yeah. I wanted oh. that Oprah and Steadman thing. Yeah. I'm like, where the nice. are you going? Yeah. This is us. Yeah, kids. I'm, I'm like that. I'm I, like, I've been, I want, like, I want, like, I want what my grandmother has. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me explain. I, when we go for Christmas and all of us are there, so her kids and their kids, so ooh, the grandkids. Yeah. And I'm like, what are the women and men who mm -hmm. have no 
children mm-hmm. doing on a day like right. this so is that how oh, am i going to be alone because mm-hmm. they can't call akinashiko at hey yeah. what can are you guys bring, up to can i can come? you bring yeah, shazi yeah, yeah, can we know, like yeah so I, that's what makes me scared um of not having children is what happens uko uko yeah. now if there was a whole community of women and we'll we all be child free we're going to be child free we're going to be chatter support systems we're going to figure it out maybe i might there's a community building you I know i don't know in this nairobi in kenya i don't it, know if such things yeah. exist they, no oh, people yeah. are still being shamed for not oh, wanting they're being kids. yeah for secondly shamed. i am mm. also scared of being listen i'm like i'm not sure i'm not whatever mm, what i don't want to be 50 and then i want one so mm. badly and i can't a man has that luxury i don't yeah so that's why the whole idea of freezing eggs has come up mm. for me yeah. and i'm like i definitely love the idea of nurturing mm-hmm. and impacting knowledge on this mm. human you mm-hmm. know and watching them becoming the person that yeah. they have they yeah. are supposed to be i want that as mm-hmm. well a little girl but then i'm like the loss of independence i don't know if i can handle that <laughs> the feeling that forever and ever even if i go to pluto i will always be your yeah. mother i can't be like yeah. i need a break for two weeks yeah. i can't, you know i this just like you're tra- I'm trapped mm, so that's yeah. the fear i have mm. but what i've always felt is that i really want my you know my person and our cute apartment and our dog and we are just you know it's like we are part of something bigger mm. yeah. in our careers and stuff like mm. that's what i'm mm, that's yeah. what i've always seen that's what i've always seen that makes sense. but now when all my the... friends are having children i'm like hiya kwani i'm seeing the wrong thing maybe yeah. <laughs> go to the child the, the child free african page it's a lot but go go and see yeah. i was there the other day and the content is just like it makes me think like mm-hmm. yes i want kids but i got a, I, I, i was thinking a lot these things to think these about things that to page think about? Yeah. okay <laughs> yeah um so i'm also trying to pick mm-hmm. the biggest baddest bigger better rafatafa the only person who can truly and fully heal your pain is you and mm-hmm. this is what being single and yo-yoing mm-hmm. from being single to being in a relationship has taught me. Yeah. Mm. Um and I'm going to back this up with another point I had mm-hmm. which is you don't have to be fully healed to get into a healthy relationship. Yeah, that's I true. I used to believe who, yeah. Yeah. I used to believe mm. that oh, and I'm like okay. no I need to be single and then I work on myself mm. and then after I've worked on myself mm. then I'm perfect uh, then yeah, I'm perfect, I can be in a relationship then whatever whatever yeah. but then what ends up happening you get all this knowledge but you have no practice ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only time you know if you have grown, my friend, yep. is when you're in that relationship and then the triggers come. Yep. And, and then you're like, wow, how mm-hmm. am I mm-hmm. reacting to this? Yeah. Yeah. Have I grown? I'm um, just here talking a big game, mm-hmm. but I'm still Julia 0.0. I'm yep. no longer, I'm, I'm not yep. the Julia 2.0 mm-hmm. I was. Mm-hmm. So, so, so just to, So I'll leave that point there as you don't have to be fully healed but there mm-hmm. has to have been some healing that has taken mm-hmm. place yeah. so True. that you're not repeating the yeah. same patterns mm-hmm. of behavior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, what I mean by by not like the B of that is that um you're the only person who can truly heal yourself is I think they are re- I th- I I can I can be what do you say? a test to that testimony testimony testament, testament. Mm. i've not been church in a while <laughs> it's my testimony <laughs> that i am healthy relationships can cause healing to happen oh I absolutely agree. that yeah. no therapy can do for you mm-hmm. or self work mm-hmm. they are even say god i know god can mm-hmm. heal but then yeah. sometimes you know mm-hmm. god's timing maybe the, the person mm-hmm. who has yeah. coming to he help. uses people he uses as yeah. well yeah yes mm. the same way you can be single but friends help you in your healing mm, journey yeah. and th- and so what's you know that's i don't see that there's any difference sometimes like that with that in a romantic relationship mm-hmm. they actually show me you your healing mm, they, yeah. so they might not cause the healing to fully happen mm-hmm. but they'll probably get you to like 40 50% yeah. which already gives you the belief that you can be the person you want to be yeah. because that is what is usually lacking when you don't have that somebody yeah. mm. the belief because once you mm. believe mm. that I am worthy. Yeah. That is already the 40%. Yeah. Um and I think there are a lot of the issues we have is that it is the boss the base of it is low self worth. Mm. Of course. And feeling like mm-hmm. I can actually do this without I can be at peace or let's just say content yeah. mm. without somebody to cuddle at night or somebody to come yeah. home to and cook for. Mm. That has to start with a belief and it starts with self worth. Yeah. Mm. Now, I think a healthy relationship can help heal heal mm-hmm. you yes. but at the end of the day if you're focusing on let's say one issue that you need to heal mm. 
the relationship can only take you to the point of yeah. I got this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then after that, that it is for you to close mm-hmm. that loop. Yeah. Because that issue will still rear its head mm-hmm. in your so-called healthy relationship. Yeah. Do you get what mm-hmm. I'm trying to say? Definitely. Yeah. I do. Um I personally feel like the healthier relationships I've been in have done so much healing to me. Yeah. The the my beliefs about love before my last relationship versus now are completely different. Um because of the chaos before like now I know love can be peaceful, love can yeah. be calm, love can just be friendship and it can there's, be boring. It can and be boring. Peace in that yeah. boringness. And mm-hmm. they so, so despite relations not working out and despite all the work I've got to do, <laughs> there's so many good things that mm-hmm. came out of it and the lessons that I see that I really believe that I I really believe that love is peaceful and love is good like mm. you know it can't happen that way and maybe let me say funny enough me and my sister have also helped each other heal like mm. have you ever watched someone i was telling you the other day that watching you being loved as well yeah. is healing mm. um you can watch someone and oh but that was me for you though oh, oh, oh yeah <laughs> that was me from your relationship really I, i'm glad you got your healing i got my healing from- <laughs> i'm glad I, you I, got your healing i got my healing cuz i was like wow this love <laughs> is is real yeah. i don't care if it didn't work out me it worked for no, me no it it was <laughs> real when it was real it was and real. it was real for the time i yeah. think i believe that and, right. and for me it was like wow i <laughs> I love this for me. No? Yeah, I know it's yeah. for you, it but happen. I love this for me. It can happen. That's it why like happen. showing like um positive um couple stuff, mm. hard launches and things like that. <laughs> it's true. They help you believe. Do you know what? Sharon, if why Sharon and not me? Why yes. Sharon and not me? There are many things that you are uh, you're able to see that are possible for you because of seeing them especially in close proxi- um, proximity. Yes. Yeah. Dr. V right now yes. like she's, like there's yes. so many cl- people close to me that I'm yes. just like I'm kind of cuddled in all of this And love. I want to thank you and mm. you mm. and also Dr. V and people we've mentioned for mm. actually um showing that fearlessly yeah. because yeah. the risk of that is that oh if it doesn't work out yeah. it's the end and be dry. I I want I just want to say it, it, what it, nothing ever works like even the happiest of people have yeah. their stuff that yeah. they are not showing mm. yeah. okay so yeah. i appreciate you and i appreciate <laughs> you because for me it yeah. helped okay. me my sister um when she she had come f- to kenya for like 3 months yeah. and when she saw me and my previous partner for a while she was like oh my god peace and just everyone being friends and she attracted her See? current boyfriend and mm. from that standard because she was vibrating mm. in that and then energy and her watching her process do her own stuff with a securely attached partner has been I would even say physically healing. Mm. Physically healing to see what it's like to um my sister always says everyone is going to trigger you but who's aggravating the triggers? And so, so the person who's going to be a healthy mirror is the one who triggers by the safety Mm. to be able to work through your stuff yes, and that's what yes. she's going through okay. so watching yeah, that yeah. being like and now me I'm seeing the other oh okay so there is a situation where these triggers but these are a healthy boundary mm. around it where everyone is like you know emotionally mature and emotionally present so you can work through stuff mm. and you Yeah, it's so beautiful. So you're so right. People you other people can help you yeah. heal. And yeah, for me sure. what, for what that shows me this whole healing thing is that bra, let me tell you it is so unlinear. Mm. You see mm. like it's not actually when you do this and then maybe this will happen and this it's like okay, I'm going to be single and then I'm going to heal. I'm not fully healed. Okay, I'm in a relationship, but I'm I'm healed. And mm. then oh my god, this relationship is bringing or triggering yeah. things that are completely unhealed in me. So I'm mm. back in the healing, but I'm with somebody. But then how can they support that? It's like it's not one way. Oh, oh mm. the other. There either. are so many mm. like in you think you got it and then you don't got then it. And don't. then you think yeah. you got it and then mm. you don't got it. Yeah. But the base of it has to be that self-worth self love mm. mm. if there's any I, for me that thing you need to figure out yeah like if there's any job any woman should have is figure out that. what self love yeah. looks like for you i'm mm-hmm. still figuring it out yeah. i know kido kidogo yeah but then it's like there are times that the thing that used to work for me two mm. years ago where i can feel that self love it's mm. not really working so i have yeah. to kind of expand mm. and explore mm. what do i need Yeah. What do I need? What do I need? Mm. Do I need to just reaffirm myself in the position I'm in right now? Do I need to journal, which is something physical? Yeah. Do I need to do a quick 7 2 6 4 6 breathing exercise? Yeah. Do I need to take a walk without a phone, without anything yeah. and just think for 30 minutes and yeah. then you have to these things they keep 
for me, they've been evolving. Yeah. Yeah. And funny enough that you should say that maybe my next my next point is that um during this single season, what I've learned is the true definition of alone time. And Jay Shetty talks about this and it's just like People are alone all the time. Like mm -hmm. you are by yourself. Yeah. But the alone time, being in a situation where you're not distracted, like you mm -hmm. said, going on a walk where you there's no some there's no some form of stimuli around. Yeah. That is something which I've learned like only now. Because if anyone asked me before, I was just like, yeah, I spent plenty of time alone. alone. Yeah. But really, I'm watching, watching something. Stuff. I'm yeah. on the phone. I'm mm. on the phone. So almost actually majority of my alone time, I'm actually not, not alone. alone. And because of being a content creator and the way that I create content is always like this. And mm. I'm showing people and I'm here. and I'm mm. So I'm always in company of this kind of invisible audience. Mm. They're not visible to me when I'm shooting, but they're there. But now in like the last two months, I have been keen to have times where it's just like, it's you and your thoughts. Lydia, I've been reaching out to you like, you know, you, you, when I tell you, uh, I've actually been telling Lydia because yeah. I've noticed that you spend like your weekends by yourself obviously yeah. because you're not consuming alcohol. I know yeah. that's a huge part of it. Yeah. Alcohol is such a huge celebrity. For me, it's still a huge part of my life. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I'm like, I'm doing a Lydia today. Like yeah. that's what I've been saying. <laughs> and yeah. I sit and... But unfortunately, I think I do the same thing where I'm just like, I'm on my phone mm. or I'm watching like, you know, like something, you remember something. last weekend I told you I binge watched, uh, what was it? The, um, this show the that ultimatum. I thought, ultimatum. I thought Quilla, the concept is ridiculous, best but thing then, ever watch it. yo, mm. I was, and, and I think I've not figured that out yet. Yeah. Um, maybe because of a bit of my trauma from uh, my twenties, mm. I, even though I'm alone and I've learned to be alone, yeah. I'm not alone. Mm. I, I have it. to have something there. Stimulating to, you. To stimulate me or to yeah. oh, reassure me that or I'm comfort. Comfort. Yeah. Mm. That's the word. Yeah. Comfort. comfort. Mm. And I would, I would be, I'd, uh, that's one of my things now. I think I need to, f I need to, and you know, I've actually written it in my journal, but I've never mm, actually, mm. yeah. like I'm like, it I, keep, I keep telling myself, Julia, be comfortable in their aloneness. Mm. Because I'm mm. like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Then after like three, four hours, I'm like, yo, what's up? What yeah. are we doing? Yeah. And yet I had said, this is my day alone. Mm. Yeah. But I'll only do it for like three, four hours. Mm. I want to do a whole Friday to Sunday yeah. and enjoy it. I yeah. want to connect with my home, with mm. my plants, not in a quick, oh my God, we need to put fertilizer. Oh my mm. God, like I really want to just do that. Yeah. And um, that's yeah. something which has, I um, think I need to stop being scared. Do you ever feel scared? No, I, I'm, I'm not scared, but I think first of all, I've been working on myself for a while, like long time. I think that for like self work as a yeah. thing has been like, since I was like maybe like 23. Um, so it's, it's been a long time coming. So time alone has not always been a problem. Even when I'm in a relationship, there's plenty of time. I'm just like, I just need to be on yeah, my own. Same. So I, I yeah. like being yeah. alone mm. when I'm in a relationship mm. and it is, on my terms, like I want you to go now. Like we've, <laughs> we've said, Fridays and Saturdays is our each alone time. Okay. Oh, okay. Schedule. Yeah, that's mm. what I try to do when I'm in whatever I'm doing. Mm. You yeah. know, you know, I'm you know I'm out here trying to look for somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when, um, yeah, like I try to say, can we just have some alone time? But I don't want it to. Like I'm scared of it when it's alone, 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 alone. I get it. Do you get oh, it? Because when you're okay. in a relationship mm -hmm. and you say, ah, today. It's different it's, it's, for it's, sure. It's, it's it's just me, and I want to have my alone yeah. time. It's because mm. you know your man's is coming the evening, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you as you're being alone, tomorrow, you're cooking yeah. for him. So yeah. actively, you are ex there's an expectation mm. of something around the corner. The end is near the end for is the near. alone time. So now the reason I'm asking yeah. Lydia is because like for you, you <laughs> you don't know when it's going to end. Mm. Yeah, I, I actually feel really comfortable alone, and I think it's because I saw my mom alone for mm. a very long time. So I saw my mom like on her days off, she would just spend time like cleaning the house, taking care of herself. So I've had a visual representation that someone is alone and being fine. Oh, yeah, right. That it's a thing. That it's a thing. Mm. You can just do that. Also, because I am learning to genuinely be alone and I want that when I do all this work that I'm doing, as we just said, the second you get into a relationship, there goes the trigger. So it's fine. <laughs> but anyway, where <laughs> I'll start, where I'll start when when the person, when someone finds me, when love finds me again, I want it to find me submerged in my own love. Okay. And so the comfort of being alone feels like I'm winning. It's like a little reward, mm, yeah. right? I'm a bit of a student geek person. So any kind of 
you've achieved feels really good. So every time I do spend a couple of hours when it's just me, no distractions, I'm just like, oh, I'm learning mm. to be alone. I'm learning to be enough. I'm learning that self worth. Th- this is mm. perfect as it is. Mm. So then, when if someone does find me, I'm less likely to betray myself to mm. get that love because mm. I'm already submerged in mine. Mm. Yeah. So that's that's the way I've been able to do it. And also, I do it in increments. Mm. Right. So even if you see me having an uh, the, the time alone in the weekend, how many hours am I distracted? Many. many. Yeah. So it's not that many hours yeah. where I'm doing it, but having bit bits where yeah. I'm able to be on my own. Yeah. Really good. I think I'd like to do that. Um yeah. I'm sorry if I'm hogging the no, mic. It's okay. But like yeah, um, I'd like to <laughs> to figure out how to um because I don't really I don't know if I really subscribe to this hyper independence, you know, narrative. Yeah, I'm like, not. Yeah. I, I feel like we need people. Yeah. yeah. We need to feel community, yeah. community yeah. Connection. and connection. I, I can yeah. tell you for a fact when I am not, mm. I am my most destructive yeah. self. Yeah. Mm. And I don't recognize who I am, but when mm. I'm in it, it's like I don't see it. It's like mm. now when I'm getting out, I'm like, what the hell was that month? Mm. Yeah. What would I, who was I hanging was out you with? Are feeling disconnected? I was so disconnected, but <coughs> in my attempt to feel connected, yeah. I surround mm. myself with the craziest people and things, you know? Yeah. So I want to be able, I, I, I want to be able to to be alone mm. intentionally mm. and shut off and not and I want to I want to have power over it yeah. so mm. that it does not have power yeah. Yeah. over me cuz mm. I, I arrange my alone time in a way that I, st- I still feel safe. Like, yeah, mm. I get it. Yeah. But I think you can start there. I you don't think, think I can oh, start with a little, yeah. like I said, yeah, let me do literally. one hour, a yeah. block of time, a right? A block it's of a time, you bit have by to bit. build. Like, it's yeah. just like bit by bit by mm. bit. And yeah. I feel like the, the wall that comforts that alone time being so beautiful is intention with other relationships. So I'm, I'm generally just an intentional person. So my friendships, the way I'm nurturing them, I feel like I can have this alone time because when it's time to connect, mm. I have connection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Please, yeah. Natasha. Me also, I don't uh, mind being in your. By the way, and she's <laughs> she's been to even my house. We have hours of talking, like four or five hours. We just yeah. talk. We don't even watch anything. We didn't even watch we anything. We talked, and I had talk. to run out because my mom was waiting for me from four. I was leaving your house at seven. Yeah, you're part of my connection. Yeah, my mom yeah. was like, Where? so she's already not. Trying. She is, but yeah. I want us to have more time. I'm yeah. asking for more time. <laughs> I think for me, it's the complete opposite. Yeah, I don't have any issue being alone. Mm. Um, in fact, if anything, I have to intentionally be like, okay, I've spent three days alone. Hi-ya. I need to reach out without to someone. distractions. Not without distractions. Okay. Obviously, mm. like three days cooped up in my house. Like I haven't left. I haven't seen anyone. I haven't talked to anyone. So I have to be like, okay, I need to go see someone today. I need to get mm. out and have human interaction. Or wow. at that point, I'm even having like cabin fever. And I have to be like, okay, so I need to like take a walk yeah i need to take a walk i need to do something yeah. i think i've just always just been okay just like, yeah you, you would yeah, you describe alone. yourself as more introverted oh no i'm very introverted okay maybe oh, that's yeah. also why so I'm it's ex- very hyper, natural hyper, hyper, very extroverted. natural i think really? it comes to me eh? i'm, I'm natural naturally you, yeah. oh, okay. Oh, okay no me yeah, an extreme no, I'm, extreme mm. extrovert mm-hmm. yeah so introverted i was just like yeah this is what i do this is who i am yeah yeah and i also have learned to also try I think for me the not being distracted thing the only issue I would have with that is that now I would have to face my thoughts yeah. and they'd be a lot mm-hmm. so it's the putting my phone away it's the whatever and mm. then just sitting in stillness mm. is something that I've actually had to practice recently mm. um, actually when I went on the solo trip that's mm. when I learned how to do that yeah. where I had to put my phone away I had to put everything away and just like sit still and face my thoughts I was like, okay, it's not so bad up here. Like, yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, you're always just trying to, like, run away, away from, from it. Thoughts, yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, let me just, like, talk to me and see what's up. Um, yeah. And I think I'm just trying to intentionally build that as well, just like you are. Yeah. Um, where I'm alone, yes, but I'm trying to not always be distracted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The solo trip changed things for me. I'd yeah. love to do sure. I've never done I a solo trip. I think that's what you me need. Too, I did it. But aren't you scared of, like, being raped and murdered? Yeah, you're I'm just sorry, like, but like I'm I, mean, a bit sure. I, I was a bit scared. People are projecting their fears because, like, when I ask, mm. like, give me solo trip 
um tips everyone was just like you know lock make sure the door is locked <laughs> blah, blah, blah. i was just like wait what is happening like uh, but i have a naivety when it comes to my safety because of growing up somewhere where safety is assumed yeah. so i always yeah. assume i'm safe right mm. however when i did go um when i did go i just put some measures in place like the driver needs to be known by the hotel and i'm yeah. going everywhere with my driver yeah. that's all i did i i wasn't thinking oh no like i'm going to be mauled mm. by a lion i didn't yeah. think that at oh all no, well, I, i have a trip coming up so maybe i will you should do that. i will yeah. <laughs> find a way to mm. like maybe get away from the group yeah, yeah. go eat alone. i was not afraid and then i'll leave all. my yeah. phone or maybe yeah. my, i'll try that yeah go sit in a restaurant alone put your phone away just yeah but i think we also need to encourage um or stop discouraging nothingness eh? with kids like what are you doing what's your plan have you done homework like mm. if because i mm. you know okay because if you if you find a kid just sitting down chilling it's like you, you want to yeah, pack them with activity to so maybe we're also uh, we are, yeah. yeah we are teaching people how not to yeah. to always yeah. have stuff to do or something yeah. to think about or, because mm. we do it when mm. we stop doing it when your kid is chilling you yeah, get yeah you're it. like yeah, yeah. it's mm. because that's what our parents were like yeah. super mm. hyper vigilant yeah. so that they taught us that but you if you're able to chill when you see yeah. your baby chilling you're going mm. to be like, all right okay you're just okay. having some alone time okay so this conversation clearly needs a part two. <laughs> thank you um already for tuning in and watching as far as we have come please come and join us in part two, where we share the rest of the things we have learned and our best kept secrets about singleness and those and what that journey looked like for all of us um yeah so see you in part two mm-hmm.